with some never before seen gameplay of Stalker 2, Heart of Chernobyl. Please welcome game director Eugene Gogolovich. Eugene, welcome yeah. to the show. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for inviting. No, honestly, it is so exciting. We've, been, we've got it on the booth here at Gamescom. I've been able to get hands on. I'm so excited for you to take us through what you've brought with us today. But how's your first Gamescom? Uh, it, the, the previous was a year ago when we bring our demo, which was showing just on the PC. Yeah. And uh, today we are bringing another demo, which we launch on Xbox Series X. And for, from our experience, it's looking very good. And we are happy for what we bring here and what we get the first impression from the players and the press. And uh, for now, I'm happy from, from what they are telling us about the Xbox build. Yeah, I, honestly, I got to have hands on with it and it is so much fun. Um, because what we're going to do as well is we're going to hop straight into the into the gameplay that you're going to talk us through. So anyone want, watching who's excited to see um, Stalker 2 for the first time, if they haven't already, uh, can see what they're going to be getting their hands on. So what are you kind of... So if, are we going to bring the, uh, the gameplay up? So we've got it on our screens. So as we go, if you want to talk us through this gameplay mm -hmm. so uh, we can know what, was, what we've got coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take this part. So uh, here the player is uh, doing his uh, first quest and he got a scanner, a device. Uh, player at this point doesn't know a lot about how it works and what yeah. it's for. He just gets information that it somehow recharged an artifact that's put it inside it and that uh, if it's, it got successful, it's going to bring a lot of a uh, lot of, let's say, money, Yeah. maybe something else. So at this point, player don't know uh, what is the goal of the character, uh, why he's doing it, and he's learning the story about your character also by doing this uh, quest, quest line. Because this is actually the bit that they've got on the show floor here, isn't yes. it, at the, at the start of the game? Because I had, I had so much fun, I, I get what you mean as well, when, they, when you're just trying to discover what exactly it does and the storyline sets that up. Um, but what about the combat in the game as well? Because we can kind of see our first fight here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, it's a group of bandits. They were resting just nearby in their camp and doing their cheeky bricky stuff. And then they saw that something happened, a, a wall was destroyed with a huge noise. They just turned up going to see what's happening and found you, a, uh, a player, and... It's, 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 it's amazing as well, because I, I found myself when I was playing this, is I was like, the flashlight turning on and off, and like, you need to kind of like, engage fights from like, a bit of cover. Yeah, so it's very important in this game to uh, have a proper tactics. You should hide a lot, you should use your med kits, you should survive grenades. pushing and challenging, yeah. they're trying to uh, outcome you to go from other side and it's pretty stressful so it, it, it's a first fight, it's a very simple fight against three bandits but uh, as from what we can see it's often lead you to several deaths. It's, so. it's very unfor uh, unforgiving as well and we just see as well, I found that it's like a big part of the game is like looting. So what, what kind of things should people be looking out for when they're looting? Yeah, so the parts of the game, so while we are fighting, we are losing our resources, consumables, food, ammo, and after the fight finished, we have to get through the uh, dead body's pockets to find some ammunition, maybe loot their camp to restore what we just spent, because without it, uh, we just run off out of the player would be like stuck because because that's the big thing i have i i am very trigger happy when it comes to first person shooters mm -hmm. like I, I i fire way more bullets than i should and then i found myself as well i was like i need to go check every building that i can because i need more ammo mm -hmm. like what kind of advice would you say for players popping into Sorga mm -hmm. to um spend their time in the world so uh the reason why you should uh, uh discover and look for uh some stashes in locations is not because you just want to find some items, but because 
it's interesting to discover this abandoned place uh, where was some living some time ago and uh, where is some story behind it and when you are uh, just walking around and looking from the corners and uh, it's beautiful there you can uh, surprisingly find something stashed there because it's a stalker stashes they use some stashes for their next uh, journeys because they can bring like a uh, hundreds of thousands of kilograms. Kilo, uh, they have to make some stashes for there, and players sometimes find them, and it's often rewardable, and uh, and often it's very rewardable, because you can get a huge equipment boost by just uh, going to some building you didn't expect to find anything there, but it could be there. That's what I found. I found myself like an assault rifle when I just had a pistol to start with. I was like exploring buildings and found that. But the game also, it looks amazing. Yeah, this is the start of the next fight. Uh, the player, we have some uh, stealth mechanics. Yeah. So it's not uh, very, uh, as you used to have a stealth in the game, it doesn't offer you like ability to be invisible for enemies. No, they will see you and shoot you. But at least uh, it allows you to get uh, slightly closer to find better position to start the fight and or maybe to start initiate the fight with the grenade to uh, so it would be easier for you and and then the fight is pretty uh, challenging yeah and you have to watch your hit points and your state because you could be got uh, bleeding and you have to use a bandage to stop this bleeding because it's uh, not it's gonna last for long and points if you not stop and use the bandages. Yeah, because you have multiple ways of healing, don't you? You've yeah. got like the bandages to stop the bleeding, but there's like different types of med kits. So kits uh, medical med kits and an army med kit. Yeah. Uh, uh, and they provide additional boost, but mostly it's restoring the hit points. But also if you are not in the fight, you can just eat and it will also bring you a small portion of hit points. See, that's what I loved as well. I found like there's so much resource management that you have to like pay attention to in Stalker, which really gives you a different challenge. So it's like, like you said, if you don't eat, you're going to perform worse in gunfights. Uh, yeah, so you have to watch about your state, just like you're watching about yourself. So we try to bring this uh, simulation or atmosphere as you be in the real human that goes to Chernobyl exclusion yeah. area with your backpack with some food and uh, you just have to do the same things to survive uh, in the game as in life because you have to eat you have to sleep uh, you have to uh, like you fall you broke your leg you have to use some med kits to survive this and uh, that's what we are doing here yeah, no, I, I, I honestly, I, it's one of those things. I'd recommend it to anyone. If you haven't had the chance to just play the original Stalker as well, because when I got to play here, you just think and approach gunfights so differently because there is that like, risk of element, like that risk element. And some of the enemies, like I was jumping out of my skin because I was like a camouflaged opponent that I came across in the demo here at Gamescom. And like, can you tell us a little bit more about the enemies that we're going to face? Uh, yeah, so uh, the zone is inhabited but by different fr fraction, factions. Uh, there are fractions that are came from the first Stalker trilogy, and there are new fractions, yeah. and they have a story behind them of how they appear, what is their goals, and for the player, it's it could it would be interesting to uncover and discover these stories. And it's important to mention that from one walkthrough, the player won't know the whole the story. Yeah. So you had to have several walkthroughs to get all these pieces together, or you could uh, discuss it with your friend who choose some okay. other path, and you can share uh, the information about what you see to each other, <coughs> and yeah. you uncover, oh, I didn't expect that it would happen like this. Yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, for me, I find it should be interesting <coughs> for people to discuss their experience uh, with each other. Yeah, we also saw just before, right, we can actually see the scanner going on right now. Can yeah. you talk us through this? It's echo scanner. It's a simple scanner. You just beep, uh, and the faster it beeps, the nearer uh, is an artifact. Yeah. You can collect an artifact just by using scanner. 
And uh, at this point, player faced that Bloodsucker is a canonical enemy in Stalker series. Uh, he has an ability to become invisible for player. And uh, we found that from the feedback of the players and from, from what we see that he's doing quite challenging thing for the players. And uh, But also it's very rewarding because when you start playing the game and you start facing some challenge for the first time, you may die, second time you may die, but uh, after and after it becomes easier for you and at some point you become master of the game and yep. everything is easy for you. But to learn the game. This terrified me. Like, honestly, I was there going like, wait. At first, I was like, what's attacking me? And I was like, how is the camouflaged opponent attacking me? It's like, I love that in this game, though, is there are so many challenging enemy, uh, like, components. Whether you're fighting bandits, whether you're, like, fighting these Shooting everything. I became like a, a loot goblin where I was going into every building and just trying to find as many med kits so that I could stay alive. Uh, and there is also a uh, lot of uh, pieces of content just near the locations. This is not a main quest, it's often not a side quest, it's just some encounters or narrative little stories to bring uh, you an experience of. Uh, discovering this real location, real zone, and it's it's not a fake world. Uh, it's full of small pieces. Yeah. And uh, for me, I find it very interesting to discover. Even if I know the game pretty much, uh, still the world map is so huge. So even for me, uh, going back to some locations make me feel. Oh, I didn't expect to find it here. Oh, they bring. Uh, something here also. So for me, it's also uh, like I feel the same wow effect when I discover something for me. You really get rewarded for spending that time to look around the world and kind of try and find those caches and it's going to pay dividends. Uh, yeah, it's <coughs> one of the main goal in making this game is to bring as much freedom and uh, allow player to be as he wants to be or she wants to be uh, to play the role uh, they feel uh, that works for them and uh, the player could like start being very rude and uh, cruel and they can act totally different in this game as like a player who yeah. wants to be uh, on the friendly side so uh, there are a lot of freedom uh, it's and it's rewarding. So even being cruel, it's rewarding. Uh, but there is a balance. Like, yeah. The game will also punish you for something. No, 100%. And I think one of the main things is for everyone who's been watching and wants to get their hands on the game, when are they going to be able to play? It's November, so it's not so time, not so much time left. It's and for us, we are like every day counts. We are doing everything possible to bring this as Polish gameplay as possible and